Alright, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at a super unique effect called time displacement. I didn't know about this effect until quite recently, and I figured I'd share it because it took me quite a while to stumble across it just randomly searching on the internet. Yeah, anyways, I figured we'd probably take a look at the effect we're going to be doing today and then hop straight into the tutorial. So. Alright, with that out of the way, let's hop into After Effects and get cracking with this tutorial. It's a super easy one, but um, pretty useful. So I have my After Effects canvas here, it's just a 1920 by 1080 we're at 24 frames per second because that's what I like to do. It doesn't really matter, um, but it is nice to know what um, FPS you're working with because we'll be using that in the time displacement. So what we're going to start off with here is super easy, we're going to create a text and I'm just going to do morning in a nice Star Mark Gothic C font from Adobe because that's a nice font. Um, especially with this effect, it works really well because it has a lot of different uh, weights, which is nice for this effect. Because what we're going to be doing is creating two text layers. I'm going to duplicate this layer by clicking Command D. And then I'm just going to change this to evening. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and pick a thin version of this font. I want the two texts to be the same width just for the set best results. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this point here and just drag it out to just about the same width. So it is a good idea to be wary of what font you use. So now that we have these two lined up and both are centered, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the anchor points. You can do this manually by clicking Y and then to make it easy on yourself, click snapping. And then you can just move the anchor points around with this tool and it will snap to all the different points. Or you can use Motion Tools, which is a free plugin, which um, makes it just a one-click solution. So on the evening text, I'm going to put the anchor point on the right-hand side. And on the morning text, I'm going to put it on the left-hand side. So now if we move these two down, you can see that on the morning text, the anchor point is on the very left center side and evening is on the right. And now the animation we're going to be doing for this, the base animation is super simple. I'm just going to highlight both of them, click S to bring up the scale and then I'm going to click keyframe and then I'm go, going to go forward 12 frames, which is half a second in this case because we're working at 24 frames per second. And then I'm going to unlink the scale so they don't scale proportionally and then I'm just going to put the, um, the first value to zero. So if you look at this, I just move this aside so you can see one by one. The morning text gets pushed to the left while the evening text gets pushed to the right. I want the evening text to push the morning text. So I'm just going to put them back and then I'm going to highlight the evening um, keyframes. Right click, go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. And now we have a super simple text push animation. What we can do now is use time displacement to create an even cooler effect. I'm just gonna take these keyframes and move them forward a little bit just so we have some more space to work with. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these two texts and I am gonna click Shift Command C to pre-comp them and I'm just gonna rename this to text. Then I'm gonna go into the pre-comp and I'm gonna click Command K to bring up the composition settings and then I'm just gonna drag the width and the height of the composition um, just to fit the text pretty neatly with a little bit of breathing room above and below and to either side. Now we have this, so as you can see, we have a little bit of breathing room on all sides, which is perfect, exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna add an adjustment layer by clicking Option or Alt, Command and Y. And then I'm gonna use FX Console to add time displacement. And now you can see we have these parameters. We have our source, which is the main thing that we're gonna be working with. And then we have the max displacement time, which just tells the effect how much you want to displace the time with. And that's set by one second and the time resolution. So I'm gonna change this to 24 because that's the composition time we're working with. And now we need a source. And the source, you want to be something that goes from black to white. So essentially, this effect works based on luminance values. You can either create a new solid by clicking Command Y and then adding a gradient wrap to it. And you can change the points to wherever you want to be. And then if we hide this and set that to be the source and click Effects and Mask, you can now see how it almost creates a kind of stuttering look which is pretty neat and you can go in and you can change the points like let's say if you want a more diagonal look so you can see how it kind of staggers diagonally and then you can go in in the adjustment layer where we have the time displacement you can go ahead and play with the displacement time so let's say we set it to point two and then we get a completely different effect. For now, we're gonna set it back to one. So now another thing you can do to this is if you have your gradient map, you can go ahead and add noise 
this case we'll use noise HLS auto. We're gonna go to grain and set the lightness to 10% and let's set the grain size to 0.4. So now you can see that the noise we've added to this translate into a more noisy texture in our time displacement. And it just gives some really interesting results. So if we decrease this to about 0.3, you can see it removes that and then the effect is gonna be a lot quicker, but it doesn't stop prematurely. Now, just by creating a simple gradient in After Effects, you've already achieved the effect. But I recently scanned a gradient just on a regular print. I just opened it up and just scanned nothing and it turned out to be a gradient. And that actually creates some really interesting results um, because it has a lot of small details that you can't really pick up on, but the irregularities in the gradient make for a really interesting look. So now that we have this gradient in here, you can see it doesn't really look that crazy of a gradient. It's just black to white, but if you look really closely, you can see a lot of dust and scan lines um, and cat hairs because they get everywhere. So now if we go into our adjustment layer and set the source to the gradient, you can see it's creating some very interesting texture in within the scan lines. That's already a pretty interesting effect and you can of course play with this. I'm just gonna increase it to, let's do about one. And then you can see that it almost kind of waves as it goes along because of the irregularities and the gradient. The more unique and non-digital it looks, the better it looks in my opinion. So now that we have this base effect going, that's pretty much the base of how you can use time displacement. But what we can do is add a bit more spice to it to make it a bit more visually appealing, to make it look something more like what you saw in the beginning. So what we can do is go ahead and we can animate the scale of this. So let's say we start at um, right before, right when the text starts coming in, I'm gonna keyframe the scale, which I brought off just by clicking S. Then I'm go, gonna go ahead until just about the end of the animation, and I'm just gonna scale it down a good bit. So if you just play that back already, it looks pretty whatever. So we can go ahead and add some easing to these keyframes by clicking F9 on it by highlighting them, and then we can go into a graph editor, and then we can go in and click on these points and drag them out just like that. So now it'll start off slow and then pick up really quick and go back down. So it's kind of more like an impacty look. Now the next thing we're gonna go ahead and add to it is Repertoz, which is just another built-in plugin into After Effects, which is really useful, especially in this case. So we're gonna go to our first keyframe and we're just gonna keyframe all of these parameters. And then I'm just gonna go to our layer and click U to bring up all the keyframes, go forward. And then I'm just gonna drag these sliders until they cover the whole screen. And that essentially fills up our whole screen with a bunch of copies of what we already have. So now if we play that back, the easing of our keyframes is different. So you can either go in manually and adjust all the easing for these keyframes, or if you want to save yourself a lot of time, get a plugin that does everything for you. You can even go ahead and adjust these as you please. But um, I've already got my sexy speed. You should already know about that one if, um, if you watch any of the other tutorials, because that is my go-to. So we apply the same easing to all of them just to get the best results. And if we play it back, we already have a super interesting effect. Definitely something that can be used in posters, stories, um, titles, etc. It's still a bit stagnant if we just ended here. So what can we add to it? Well, what we can do is go ahead, go a couple frames forward, and then I'm gonna keyframe everything again. And then I'm gonna decrease the scale a little bit to just about, let's say 30. And then I'm just gonna reset all of these to zero. So now if we play that back, it goes in, more in, and then I'm gonna increase the scale again to 100. So now this is what we have. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new text layer. And I'm gonna type morning, which is our original text and set it to our original heavy, center it up, and then click U to bring up all our keyframes. For the morning text, I wanna animate the scale and the opacity. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, where it's at our smallest, I'm gonna match the scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and type 30. And as you can see, the keyframe is on our bottom left corner of text. It always, that's just the default of how it goes. To make sure that the scale animation works properly, we're gonna to have to center our keyframe to our anchor point first, and then center it up so it's aligned all the way through. Then I can keyframe my scale, go forward and set it up to 100. So I'm gonna keyframe the opacity, set it to zero, move forward, set it to 100. And then 
to blend these two texts together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the keyframe, uh, the opacity keyframes for our original pre-comp, set the opacity to zero, and go back and set it to 100. So while one fades in, the other fades up. So now we have this effect, which looks a bit wonky. So if you add an adjustment layer to this whole composition, and then add a fast bl box blur, I'm gonna start the keyframe just at the beginning of this at zero, and I'm gonna click U, go about halfway through our keyframes, set it to three, and then zero again. So it gets blurry and then unblurs itself. We're gonna add a levels, and then I'm just gonna go ahead to the midpoint where it's the most blurry. I'm gonna go into my levels effect and go to alpha. And then I'm just gonna move these sliders until I get a pretty good blob of randomness. And then you don't want to squish them all the way together because you'll get some pretty rough edges. Just leave a little bit of space between the three little arrows. So if you now scroll through this, you can see it kind of morphs together a little bit more. To sell this warp effect, warp effect a bit more, I'm going to start the blur just a bit before and a bit after so that it kind of eases in a little bit. And I'm also going to add a wave warp to this just to give it a bit more motion. I'm going to increase the width quite a bit and decrease the height to about three. Maybe the way width was a bit too high. I'm just gonna set it to about 100. Then what I'm gonna do is keyframe those two so that they are at the peak when we have our maximum blur. And I don't want them to start any sooner than our original um, blur animation starts. Let's just set that to zero. So now if we play back, we have a little bit more of an interesting effect. I'm gonna select all the keyframes and apply the same speed. Animations always work better when you have some easing to keyframes just because it's the easiest way to create some tension in the animation instead of it just being a linear animation. And now that is essentially the base animation for this. Now you can go ahead and add a couple more elements to it to really spice it up. For example, you can go ahead and add a, a second adjustment layer and we'll add optics compensation, which essentially mimics kind of like a distorted TV look almost. So if I drag this up, for example, you can see how it bends and then I'm just gonna reverse it. So it kind of looks like we're being zoomed into it. If you're like me and like a lot of texture and sort of movement, you can add a couple more things to it, such as turbulent displacement, just to create a bit more wiggle, which you can easily do by adding an adjustment layer or just adding to whatever layer. Click turbulent displace and set the parameters to eight and eight. That's just my go-to. And then I'm gonna open the evolution options. I'm gonna alt click the random seed. And then I'm just gonna do time times 100. Actually, I'm gonna do about five. And now you can see it's very subtle, but it's there. Voila, super easy. Um, title animation that you can use for different projects, titles, etc. That was it for this tutorial. I hope you feel inspired to use time displacement or at least play around with the effect because you can get some really unique results and it's always an easy fix to if you need to spy something up in a pinch then add some time displacement and see what it gets you. So you might be surprised with the results. That's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed and um, thank you for watching. See you next time.